Hello my wonderful group of students. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Prachi and in today's session we would be working on the preparation, physical and chemical properties of bases. We have already covered three methods of preparation of bases in a previous video. So if you have not watched that yet, I will link that in the description box below. Make sure that you go through that video before you start this one. Thank you so much and let's get started now. Alright students, uh, moving on, let's start with the preparation of bases. This is the second part of preparation of bases that we are doing. So let's start with the fourth method. Fourth method is by double decomposition or displacement reaction. So we have a salt solution, we have an alkali which will give us a basic hydroxide and a normal salt. So don't worry about what is normal salt, okay? When we are doing salts part, in that we would cover all the different types of salts that we have. So let's begin with the first one. The first equation is FeCl3. What is FeCl3? That is ferric chloride. So let me just write that here. This is ferric chloride. What is ferrous chloride? FeCl2 is... ferrous chloride okay so we have FeCl3 plus NaOH that is ferric chloride this will give us FeOH whole thrice that is ferric hydroxide plus NaCl and this ferric hydroxide is reddish brown in color it is a PPT it is a reddish brown PPT Moving on to CuSO4, copper sulfate plus NaOH, which will give me CuOH whole twice and that is copper hydroxide plus Na2SO4 and this copper hydroxide is a pale blue PPT. Now moving on, I have aluminium AlCl3 plus NH4OH that will give me ALOH whole thrice plus NH4Cl. Okay, so this is the fourth method of preparation of bases. Then moving on, we have by action of oxygen on metal sulfides. Okay, so I have ZnS, so metal sulfide plus oxygen giving me metal oxide plus sulfur dioxide. So very simple ZnS plus oxygen will give me ZnO plus SO2 this will give me PbO plus SO2 and this will give me CuO plus SO2 and this SO2 is a gas so you can put a upward arrow along with that balancing the equations is your homework make sure that you mention that in the comment section if you are facing any issues with it Moving on to the sixth method that is by decomposition of salts like metal carbonates and metal nitrates. Now this decomposition is in the presence of heat so we can also call it thermal decomposition. So let's see what will we get. So I have calcium carbonate CaCO3 so that will give me CaO plus CO2. CuCO3 that is copper carbonate will give you copper oxide CuO plus carbon dioxide. Now if I have calcium nitrate so what would happen in nitrate the gas that I will get would be NO2 along with that I will also get oxygen and before that I will get calcium oxide. So calcium oxide NO2 plus oxygen. Moving on I have ZnNO3 that means zinc nitrate. So what will that give me? That will give me ZnO plus NO2 plus oxygen that is O2. Okay. So this is the thermal decomposition that is happening. There is some exceptional cases here. So we look at that now. One thing that you have to understand is that not all nitrates will give you the same products when we heat them. Okay. And this we will do in detail when we are doing the chapter nitric acid. 
so for now just look at these couple of examples and couple of exceptions that we have but the details we will do in nitric acid so for sodium and potassium okay so let let me write sodium and potassium this is important so what we can learn in this is that sodium carbonate and potassium carbonate not a pause plus sign but and potassium carbonate these do not decompose so do not decompose on heating so sodium and potassium are the exceptional cases so sodium carbonate and potassium carbonate will not decompose on heating whereas sodium nitrate and potassium nitrate will not give us metallic oxides whereas it will give us metallic nitrites so let's look at the details of that note not all nitrates when gone through thermal decomposition will give us the same by products that is the first thing that i already mentioned then sodium carbonate and potassium carbonate do not decompose on heating second important part the third is sodium nitrate and potassium nitrate do not give metal oxide on heating instead give metal nitrite and oxygen so they give you different type of outputs now moving on to preparation of ammonium hydroxide now this is the last preparation reaction of bases and this is the most easiest one of all so ammonium hydroxide that is nh4oh what will it get combined with so you'll have ammonia gas nh3 plus water which will give us nh4oh okay so i hope this much makes sense moving on to properties of bases we have physical properties to start with so let's start with taste so bases they have a very sharp bitter taste okay now try and remember what was the taste of acids acids have a sour taste okay so they these bases have a sharp bitter taste acids have a sour taste now they are soapy substances that means that they are slippery to touch that means that also means that if you have a base and you combine it with oil that will give you a soap and the detail of this we would do when we are doing organic chemistry moving on i have they uh, they are strong electrolytes they show a mild corrosive action on skin so acids showed us a very strong corrosive action on skin bases show us a mild corrosive action on skin moving on to indicators i have litmus indicator first that is what is the action on bases it will turn your red litmus to blue methyl orange will turn yellow from orange and phenolphthalein will turn pink from colorless so colorless to pink now one thing to note here is that insoluble bases do not affect indicators for example if even if you think about dry hcl gas it does not show any change on the litmus paper or any of the indicators because for your indicators to work you need some moisture in the compound if they are insoluble bases then how will they affect indicators they will not affect the indicators okay okay students let's move on to the chemical properties of bases all right so what happens in here is first one strong alkalies absorb carbon dioxide from air to form carbonates that means the reaction would be something like you have alkali plus carbon dioxide and we look at the output of that so what do i get i have naoh plus co2 so that will give me na2co3 plus H2O KOH plus CO2 that will give me K2CO3 plus H2O okay moving on i have they neutralize acids to form salt and water this we have known for so long acids plus bases will give me salt plus water so NaOH plus HCl will give me NaCl plus H2O KOH plus H2SO4 will give me k2so4 
plus H2O. Moving on, their reaction with salts of heavy metals. So you have CuSO4. So metallic salt plus base will give you insoluble hydroxide plus salt. What is insoluble hydroxide? That means it would be in the form of PPT. So CuSO4 plus NH4OH will give me CuOH whole twice that is your pale blue PPT. Along with that you will get NH4 whole twice SO4 as the salt. ZnSO4 plus NaOH that is ZnOH. So ZnOH whole twice plus Na2SO4 and this is gelatinous white PPT. Moving on, I have FeSO4 plus NaOH. So that would give me FeOH whole twice plus Na2SO4. Okay, and this is a dirty green PPT. So dirty green PPT. These hydroxides are insoluble precipitates. Okay, so this is an important one. You should know these. Moving on to the last part, that is the fourth chemical property. When alkalis are warmed with an ammonium salt, ammonia gas is given out of NaOH and KOH. For example, reaction of NaOH and KOH with NH4Cl. So let's look at the reactions. NaOH, so they are saying ammonia gas will come out. So the first thing we'll do is that once you have a base and that is reacting with uh, ammonium chloride that is NH4Cl you will get ammonia gas so write that first in both the reactions you will get ammonia gas what will I get along with that so the first thing I'll get in this case is you'll get NaCl and you'll get KCl as salts what is left out our water is left out so H2O H2O okay so these are your chemical reactions or chemical um, properties of bases. So students, this is where we end our today's session. In this session, we covered preparation, physical and chemical properties of bases. I will share some questions at the end of the notes that you can try from the portion that we have covered. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing so far please continue doing that i will attach the whole playlist uh, in the description section below and if you have any doubts and concerns let me know in the comments section if you would like me to start off with a new chapter which chapter i would like you would like to target do let me know that as well thank you so much looking forward to our next session